Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text from Acts chapter 13. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent a message to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation, of encouragement, for the people, say it. A teacher asked her students to list the names of the other students in the class on a sheet of paper, leaving a space between each line. Then she told them to think of the nicest thing they could say about each of their classmates and write it down. It took the remainder of the class period to finish their assignment, and as the students left the room, each one handed in their papers. That Saturday, the teacher wrote down the name of each student on a separate sheet of paper and listed what everyone else had said about that individual. On Monday, she gave each student his or her list. Before long, the entire class was smiling. Really? they whispered. I never knew I meant anything to anyone, and I didn't know others liked me so much were some of the comments. Several years later, one of the students was killed in Vietnam, and his teacher attended the funeral. The church was packed with his friends. After the funeral, most of Mark's former classmates went together to a luncheon. There, Mark's mother and father were there, and they they sought out the teacher. We want to show you something. His father said, They found this on Mark when he was killed. We thought you might recognize it. He carefully opened up two worn pieces of notebook paper that had obviously been taped, folded, and refolded many times. The teacher knew without looking that the papers were the ones on which she had listed all the good things each of Mark's classmates had said about him. Thank you so much for doing that, Mark's mother said. As you can see, Mark treasured it. All of Mark's former classmates started to gather around. Charlie smiled rather sheepishly and said, I still have my list. It's in the top drawer of my desk at home. Chuck's wife said, Chuck asked me to put his in our wedding album. I have mine too, Marilyn said. It's in my diary. And then Vicki, another classmate, reached into her pocketbook, took out her wallet, and showed her worn and frazzled list to the group. I carry this with me at all times, she said. I think we all saved our lists. Oh, for a word of encouragement. Encouragement can pick you up when you're down. It can change a rotten day into a great day. It can give you strength to go on and to try harder. And encouragement is what the leaders of the synagogue in Antioch asked Paul to give them. A word of encouragement. Is encouragement one of the things you think of when you think of church? Coming to church to receive a word of encouragement? Should be. We come beaten and battered by the world, tossed in the winds and the waves of our own sins. Jesus meets us at the front door, welcomes us home, invites us to join Him, to come away with Him. To escape the pressures, the deadlines, and the demands of our everyday world. And to spend some time with the Lord. I read that on average, uh, in our day, with logos and ads and TV and internet and the rest, we are subjected to somewhere around 16,000 images. 
I think you could probably double that if you're messing around with Twitter or Facebook. Is it any wonder we feel overloaded? See, we have to sift through these 16,000 messages and images. And we have to decide which ones to pay attention to and which ones to ignore. That is 16,000 decisions. And we wonder why we're tired. It's relentless. It never stops. It never lets up. And it never takes a day off. But when we come to church, we come into another world. It's a different world. It's a world where we can find rest. We don't have to be all those things or be concerned about all those things the 16,000 messages tell us that we should be. What a relief. We can just be ourselves. We can be honest. Honest. Well, see, somewhere inside we know that we are not those 16,000 things. We do not look like those models. We don't have million dollar homes. We don't have superhuman skills. And what we do have, most of those images are trying to convince us is not enough. Life is hard. It's hard for everyone at one time or another. And when life is really hard, We need encouragement. William Ward said, Flatter me, I may not believe you. Criticize me, and I may not like you. Ignore me, and I may not forgive you. But encourage me, and I will not forget you. Brothers, Paul said, you sons of Abraham, and also you God-fearing Gentiles. This message of salvation has been sent to us. The people in Jerusalem and their leaders did not recognize Jesus as the one the prophets had spoken about. Instead, they condemned him. And in doing this, they fulfilled the prophets' words that are read every Sabbath. They found no legal reason to execute him, but they asked Pilate to have him killed anyway. When they had done all that the prophecies said about him, they took him down from the cross and placed him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And over a period of many days, he appeared to those who had gone with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to the people of Israel. And now we are here to bring you this good news. The promise was made to our ancestors, and God has now fulfilled it for us, their descendants, by raising Jesus. A word of encouragement. Paul told them about Jesus Christ. He gave them the gospel, the greatest word of encouragement ever. Jesus has come, has lived, died, and rose for us. We are important to God. God knows that life is hard and that we cannot get through it alone. God knows that we need help and God gives it. That's the message that John the baptizer was sent to proclaim. Today we remember when John the baptizer was born, when God sent this great prophet ahead of Jesus to encourage his people. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies 
and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies, to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare a way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the path of peace. I don't know what your week was like. I don't know the challenges, joys, and sorrows you faced, but whatever they were, you have come to the right place. God has never stopped thinking about you. God has come to rescue and save you. That was John's message. The church was established by Jesus to bring us encouragement. Encouragement through the forgiveness of our sins. Encouragement through the gospel message of salvation. Salvation that is great and free. A gift from God to you. Today, Jesus stands before you like he does on every day of your life. But here and at this place, and he helps you to know he's here. Jesus is here with encouraging words. Your sins are forgiven. That you can have another chance. That you can try it again. That you can go encouraged and in peace to face the world you live in. A counselor on the internet said this, Parents, I wish there was some way I could communicate to you the incredible blessing which affirming words impart to children. I wish too that you could sit in my office when I counsel and hear the terrible damage that individuals received from not hearing affirming words, particularly affirming words from a father. While words from a godly teacher can melt a heart, words from a father can powerfully set the course of a life. If affirming words are something something rarely spoken in your home growing up, let me give you some tips on words and phrases that can brighten your own child's eyes and life. These are words that are easy to say to any child who comes into your life. I'm proud of you. Way to go. I knew you could do it. You're very special to me. I trust you. Beautiful work. You're a real trooper. Well done. That's so creative. You make my day. I love you. You remembered. You're the best. You sure tried hard. I couldn't be prouder of you. You light up my day. I'm praying for you. I'm behind you. You're God's special gift. I'm here for you. Jesus says all of these encouraging things to you and me. And we have a joy that goes way beyond happiness. Joy in His security and His love and His promise. And we bring you the good news that God promised to the fathers This he has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising Jesus. That's a word of encouragement. A word that will never fail us. A word that we can depend on.
And when you come to church, listen closely in our worship, our hymns, our prayers, the sacrament. You will hear encouragement straight from the heart of God. You are forgiven. I love you. I love you. This is our good news. The Lord is my rock and my salvation. And we can live a whole lifetime in that encouragement. And we can pass that encouragement and the joy of life on to our family and to our friends and to everyone we serve in our vocations. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.